Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. This is AMTV Alternative Media Television. I am here with Luke. Really doesn't need an introduction. We are changed. We've been following his videos for years. Very popular. Luke, what brings you to LPAC 2013? Oh man, that's a good question since I almost got kicked out of here just a couple of minutes ago. There's a lot of people here that I really want to talk to. I don't know if I will be able to do that because now I have security guards on me next to the major people, but I'm here pretty much to uh, ask questions and to talk to people and network a little bit. There's a lot of good people like yourselves here, like Ben Swan. So it's a great opportunity to meet and talk to people, which I love, and I love that conversation. I love that collaboration. I love just going out there into the world and finding out what's really happening. Yeah, now you're famous for Bilderberg. You, you ask a lot of tough questions. I mean, you've yeah. given detailed coverage of this through the years. Yeah. The Bilderberg right. meeting took place here in here. 2008. Yeah, and well, 2012. Uh, so it happened here a couple times, which is really interesting. Uh, so it's just like kind of weird being in here for a Liberty event. There are some Liberty people like the you know, uh, co-founder of PayPal that also attend the Bilderberg meeting as well. So there is some kind of connection here as well. Uh, Peter Thiel, I believe, I believe yeah. his name is, uh, he's a Bilderberg member. I've been dying to interview him because I want to know the connection. I want to know why he's attending these events, what's his role, what he gets out of it. I would love nothing but to talk to these people. Uh, maybe, maybe Peter Thiel will be here. Maybe I will be able to talk to him, which would be amazing and great. And I would love to do that because deep down, there's this big mystique. There's all this conspiracy theories. There's, there's all these beliefs. But ultimately, it's not what you think. It's what you can prove. And the only way you can prove something is by taking this mic and shoving it in somebody's face and be like, "What the? What's going on? Yeah, and asking the tough What's happening? What's happening? Yeah. So, what do you think that connection is? If he's the largest donor to the Ron Paul campaign, he's also a Bilderberg yeah. attendee. We're here at the hotel. Yeah. That that is Bilderberg been held here yeah. Two past years. What does that mean? I don't know. I, it, now we're going into speculation. I never, ever, ever, ever want to get into speculation and my personal beliefs or my personal ideas because that really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think. It's what you could prove. And that's why I hope people are subscribing to our YouTube channel is because we don't put out theories out there. We don't put out my beliefs or my thoughts out there of what I think is happening because ultimately that's only talk. It doesn't matter. What matters is what you can prove. So that's why I'm here also to see what I can prove. And again, you see Theo, you let me know. It's in a heartbeat. Well, yeah. they call him, he's kind of like the PayPal godfather. Pretty much. So I don't, I don't yeah. know if that means he gives you an offer you can't refuse or, or what the deal is. But I've heard a lot of interesting things about him, to say the least. I mean, I've, I heard people say really bad things about him. I heard people say really good things about him. But until I meet him, until I talk to him, then I'll be able to find out. If he's going to be scared, if he's going to be running away just because of a basic question, and I don't have to come at it in a rude way, I could come at it in a very respectful way, that tells a lot. And that, that to me is the power behind these confrontations, behind confronting people like Ben Bernanke, David Rockefeller, Lloyd Reagan, John Trump, you know, all these other Bilderberg members that we confronted. The power lies within how weak these human beings are, how scared these people are, and how pathetic they are running away from easy, simple, polite questions about real issues that are really important to the American public. It shows so much. So we'll see what happens. It's ultimately the reaction that tells you everything. Uh, uh, so you're based out in New York City. Yeah, Brooklyn, New York. You know, a lot of people started picking you up around Occupy Wall Street. You got yeah. exclusive coverage of that. I mean, you really broke a lot of those stories all over the internet. What's happened to OWS? Is that fizzled out? Is it still yeah. there? Yeah. I think, why has it fizzled out if that's the case? Uh, it fizzled out because of many reasons. One, because of internal conflicts. Uh, internal problems. Whenever you're working with a large group of people, there always is going to be issues with ego and pride, and that was self-destructive within itself. Now you add another aspect of that, and that's the federal government cracking down on Occupy Wall Street, going against their campaigns, figuring out one day to destroy all of them in all around the country. Uh, you look at the FBI documents that talk about assassinating Occupy Wall Street leaders. You talk about the infiltration that probably happened and went on that we'll find out 34 years from now when the documents become declassified. You talk about all the outside forces and this huge force of oppression going down on anybody speaking out. Of course, it fizzled out. Once that space was gone, everything else was gone. That sense of community, that sense of bond. You know, I went down there. I loved it down there because personally, like, I don't, I don't see myself as a 
from a particular ideology. I don't see myself as a Republican or Democrat or liberal or conservative or even libertarian. My thing is ask questions to find out the truth. What was beautiful about Occupy Wall Street, I don't have a particular ideology. I have problems with a lot of different ideologies, but I was able to sit and eat and sometimes even sleep because I was working so hard down there that I decided to sleep down there. I was able to do that with communists, with libertarians, with socialists, with Democrats and Republicans with you know, far right wingers and far left wingers and people from all different political spectrums, I was able to sit and eat with them and get to know them and have a conversation and a dialogue with them and decide what we agree upon. And that was extremely dangerous to the system. Now I know a lot of people out there were like, Occupy Wall Street's controlled. It's George Soros' is run. I mean, Adam Kokesh was saying that, Mark Dice was saying that, Alex Jones was saying that. Me and David Icke were there like, hey, wait, listen. There's a potential here. There's there's something here that could maybe change something, but it what, didn't. What could happen? What could change? I mean, just think about it. When people come together from all different political spheres and not talk about what divides them, but talk talk about what brings them together, we realize that the top one percent, sorry, point zero 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 one percent, is screwing everybody else over, and they're dividing and, dividing and conquering everybody else in the lower platforms. We're fighting amongst us, uh, ourselves when we should be going after the root of the problem. That was slowly unwinding at Occupy Wall Street. That's extremely dangerous, and that's why the government used all the force, all the intelligence, all the spying apparatuses to go after them and to destroy them, and they have. So is that going to take a revolution to change things? And because I mean, we've seen how the OWS was snuffed out. Yeah. Whether or not you you know agree with OWS or not, what does that mean? You know, Ron Paul ran on a campaign yeah. of you know, revolution, evolution. What what needs to happen next in your opinion? Uh, to me, people got to put their egos and pride aside. Stop putting your label, your political ideology, out in front, and start acting like a human being and understanding that we all have a common goal. We all want to live in this world. We all want to be happy. We all don't want to be screwed over by the very top elite that don't give a damn about us. We shouldn't be fighting each other. Stop with that crap. Stop with that. I don't want to curse, but yeah, that bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> Stop. Stop worrying about an armed revolution and start thinking about an evolution that can take place within yourself when you make decisions and moves within your own human potential to change things in your local community. Uh, simple things, little things, buying local, not putting your money in big banks, uh, creating a network of support of people who will be there for you. Uh, you know, and there's so many more organic farming, sustainable community, there's so many other more possibilities of us simply saying we're not going to participate in your system instead of just fighting the system. So that's why I don't call for a revolution. What I hope and I hope and I envision happening is an evolution of the human body and spirit into a potential that is really there to change anything and everything in this world. Yeah, I hope we're hip. I sound like a preacher. I don't like uh, this. I, yeah, this, this is cool. This is cool. Luke, we are change. Check them out if you haven't already on YouTube. Yeah. Any last words for our audience? Yeah. No, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your work. Definitely subscribe. It helps me out so much. I love all the comments. I love in, you know interacting with you guys. I'm working by myself right now, so I could use all the help I could get. If you're in New York City, want to help me out? I could I could definitely use it. If you know anything that I should be talking about, let me know. But thank you for everything you guys are doing, being part of the Alternative Media Collective, and thank you for being out there and supporting us. Thank you, Lou. Really because appreciate without it. you, we're nothing. Today's retail politics, but these three events are the root of nearly every controversy this country suffers from today. After 1913, the United States' once a grand laboratory of democratic experiments became irrevocably changed to the one-size-fits-all decisions of experts and special interests in Washington, D.C., or what some call America's ruling class. Rather than